Okay. Welcome and thank you for joining us this evening for the proposed Gridlions West Core Upgrades Transmission Line Project. It's a public scoping meeting. My name is Ellen Hopp and I will serve as your moderator for this meeting. I'm with Galileo Project, who is supporting the BLM as a meeting coordinator and facilitator. We'll get started in just a few moments. Please note the meeting attendees are muted and video feeds are turned off. This meeting is being recorded and transcribed. If you do not want to participate in a recorded meeting, this would be the time to leave the meeting. While we're waiting for others to arrive, please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the controls at the bottom of your screen. If you are having audio difficulties during the meeting, you can use your phone for audio and your computer to view the screen. If you do this, remember to turn off or mute your computer audio to avoid electronic feedback. If you are having trouble with your internet connection, please consider dialing in by phone. Dial in information is located in your registration confirmation email. This meeting will include opportunities for questions and answers about the National Environmental Policy Act process, environmental impact statement, and resource management plan amendment. Questions will be received using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. This meeting will also include opportunities to provide a verbal comment. We will begin with those participants who indicated when registering for the meeting that they would like to make a comment. For all others who would like to make a comment, we will ask you to raise your hand. However, please wait until I give you the signal to do so. For those joining by phone, pressing star nine allows you to raise and lower your hand. Pressing star six will mute and unmute your mic. I ask that everyone keep themselves muted until you are asked to unmute. Next slide, please. The agenda for today's meeting will include an introduction from Nicholas Pei, the BLM's Pahrump Field Office Manager, a presentation about the proposed project, a question and answer session, a public comment period, and closing remarks. Next slide, please. The presenters joining us for today's meeting include Nicholas Pei, the BLM Pahrump Field Office Manager, Marianne Vinson, BLM Realty Specialist, and myself, Ellen Hopp, with Galileo Project, serving as the meeting facilitator. Also joining today's meeting are the BLM Resource Specialists displayed on the screen to help answer resource-specific questions behind the scenes. Additionally, there are other BLM Resource Specialists who are not in attendance at today's meeting but they are assisting in the National Environmental Policy Act process and developing the Environmental Impact Statement and Resource Management Plan Amendment. Now, Nicholas Pei, the BLM Perump Field Office Manager, will provide an introduction. Nicholas? Thank you, Ellen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the public meeting for the proposed Gridlions West Core Upgrades Transmission Line Project. My name is Nicholas Pei, and I am the field manager for the BLM's Prompt Field Office. I want to thank each of you for coming this evening to hear more about the proposed project and to provide your comments and input on this pro project. The proposed project is located in Nye and Clark counties in Nevada. The BLM has initiated the, the environmental review required by the National Environmental Policy Act. This initiated a scoping period that will be open until September 14th, 2023. This virtual scoping meeting is one of the first opportunities that individuals and agencies have, have to provide input on this proposed project. The overall goal is to define the scope of the issues to be addressed in, in depth in the analysis that will be included in the EIS. As you consider your comments, I would like to provide some information on what is most beneficial for us in the process. First of all, please remember that commenting is not a form of voting on an alternative. Numerous comments that repeat the same basic message or support or opposition will typically be addressed collectively. As a general rule, please be polite and respectful. We recognize that some of you may not like or want this project. Those reviewing comments are public servants tasked with a job and they deserve the same respect and professional treatment that you would expect. Also, as you provide your comments, please keep in mind the most helpful comments are clear, concise, and relevant to the analysis of the proposed action. Comments should be focused on identifying clear issues that may arise 
should this project be authorized and provide specific examples of solutions that could lead to ways to effectively eliminate, minimize, or mitigate the issue. We are still in the early stages of the National Environmental Policy Act process, so we may not have all of the answers to your specific questions. The primary purpose of the scoping period is to ensure that we have a good handle on the issues that need to be analyzed during the NEPA process. Thank you again for joining us this evening. I would like to pass the presentation over to Marianne Vincent, BLM, specialist, BLM Realty Specialist for the project. Good evening. The BLM's purpose is to respond to the right-of-way application submitted by Gridlines West, LLC, to amend portions of the existing BLM right-of-way grants to construct, operate, maintain, and decommission approximately 155 miles of alternating current overhead transmission lines. The BLM will evaluate the right-of-way application by Gridlines West, LLC, in compliance with the Federal Land Policy and Management Act. The BLM's right-of-way regulations and other applicable federal laws and policies. The BLM's purpose and need for the project will be used to formulate a reasonable range of alternatives to be considered and analyzed during the National Environmental Policy Act analysis process. The BLM will evaluate these alternatives through an environmental impact statement. Additionally, the BLM's purpose and need for the resource management plan amendment is to bring the project into compliance and consistency with the 1998 Las Vegas Field Office Resource Management Plan as it pertains to elements of the project for which there is no option to attain compliance. Next slide, please. The map depicts key elements of the proposed project in its layout, including the transmission line and substations. The proposed route is depicted in bold orange, green, and blue lines. The orange line represents the 275-foot right-of-way. The green line represents the 150 or 275 foot right away, and the blue line represents the 150 foot right away. There are seven existing substations and one proposed substation along the proposed route. The project area includes approximately 4,900 acres of lands administered by the BLM, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Department of Defense, State of Nevada, as well as private lands in Clark and Nye Counties, Nevada. Next slide, please. The proposed upgrade consists of four segments with double circuit 230 kilovolt or 500 kilovolt options being considered for each segment, unless otherwise noted. In segment one, Sloan Canyon Switchyard to Trout Canyon Switchyard includes upgrades and expansions at both switchyards. The Trout Canyon switchyard upgrades are located on BLM administered lands and this segment would be upgraded to a double circuit 500 kilovolt transmission line regardless of the voltage option chosen for the remainder of the system. Segment 2, Trout Canyon switchyard to Pahrump substation includes upgrade, upgrades and expansions at the Game Bird substation and at Pahrump substation, which both occur on private lands. Segment three, Pahrump substation to Innovation substation includes upgrades at the Innovation substation. The transmission line upgrades between the Pahrump substation and the proposed Johnny Corner substation would be constructed at either 230 kilovolt or 500 kilovolt. The Johnny Corner substation would only be constructed under the 500 kilovolt option. The portion from the proposed Johnny Corner substation to the Innovation substation would consist of a double circuit 230 kilovolt transmission line under both options. Segment four is Innovation Substation to Northwest Substation. 
includes upgrades at the Desert View substation. This segment would be upgraded to a double circuit 230 kilovolt transmission line under both options. The final voltage configuration of the transmission line requested by grid lines would be determined based on California Independent System Operator led studies and will be finalized before the record of decision. For segments where both 230 kilovolt and 500 kilovolt options are being considered, Gridlines is currently advancing design efforts for both options. The 500 kilovolt components generally require a 275 foot wide right of way, whereas the 230 kilovolt components generally require a 150 foot right of way. Gridlines West anticipates an 18 to 24 month construction time frame. California Independent System Operator's goal is for the operations to begin by the end of 2025. Next slide, please. The National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 requires the lead federal agency, BLM, to evaluate effects of the proposed project on the natural and human environment. The environmental impact statement will include a detailed analysis of potential environmental impacts from which decision makers can make an informed decision. With the publication of the Notice of Intent to Prepare Environmental Impact Statement in the Federal Register, the notice announces an environmental impact statement and resource management plan amendment will be prepared and initiates the public scoping process for identifying issues and potential alternatives for consideration in the environmental impact statement. Through scoping, the public has an opportunity to help agencies identify re relevant issues associated with the project and develop potential alternatives to be analyzed in the environmental impact statement. The next public involvement milestone will include the draft environmental impact statement and resource management plan amendment comment period, which includes a 90-day public review and comment period, and several public information meetings. After receiving and responding to public comments, the BLM will continue to revise the analysis in preparation for a final environmental impact statement and proposed resource management plan amendment. The final in environmental impact statement and proposed resource management plan amendment comment period will include a 30-day public availability and protest period and a 60-day governor's consistency review period. Finally, the BLM will publish a record of decision to approve approve with modifications or deny the application. Next slide, please. The National Environmental Act of, Policy Act of 1969 establishes the process for carrying out an evaluation of a project. An environmental impact statement is prepared to analyze and disclose effects of the proposed action on the natural and human environment and to consider reasonable alternatives and mitigation measures. The environmental impact statement will inform the BLM's decision on whether to approve, approve with modifications, or deny Gridlines West LLC's application to build the Gridlines West Core Upgrades Transmission Line Project. This decision will be documented at the end of an the analysis process and a record of decision. The environmental impact statement analysis process includes steps to ensure coordination and collaboration between agencies and to provide the interested public with opportunities to provide input, identify issues, and offer solutions early in the environmental, the, pardon me, and offer solutions early in the National Environmental Policy Act process. The scoping period, which we are in now, is the first formal oppor opportunity to gather that input. Information and perspectives shared during scoping will inform the analysis. 
alternatives development and mitigation measures considered in the environmental impact statement. Next slide, please. The BLM must analyze the full range of effects to the proposed project and reasonable alternatives. An impact or effect is a change or consequence that results from an activity which can be positive, negative, or both. An environmental impact statement describes effects and ways to mitigate effects. To mitigate means to lessen or remove negative effects. Displayed on the screen is the initial list of resources identified by the BLM to be analyzed in the environmental impact statement. Next slide, please. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act requires federal agencies to consider the effects of their undertakings on historic properties that are included or may be eligible for inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places. The BLM is using the environmental review process to meet its compliance requirements for Section 106. At this time, the BLM is seeking your input to help identify historic properties that may be affected by the proposed project. This information will assist the BLM in identifying and evaluating impacts and effects to cultural resources. You may provide written comments regarding cultural resources and historic properties as part of the National Environmental Policy Act scoping comment process. If you have specific information about historic properties or have questions about the 106 process, you can also contact Tiffany or Wren using the contact information provided on the screen. Next slide, please. We hope you will consider participating in this scoping effort for the Gridlines West Core Upgrades Transmission Line Project. All interested parties and agencies are invited to submit written comments before the end of the scoping period. You can do so in three ways. Online at the BLM's National Environmental Policy Act Register website by clicking the Participate Now button to the left of the document link, by sending an email, or mailing your comments to the contact information provided on the screen. Your comments are most helpful if they address one or more of the following resources likely to be affected by the project, potential resource issues that should be analyzed, data sources that the agency may not be aware of, and or reasonable alternatives to be considered in the analysis. Next slide, please. Thank you for your attention. Further information about the project and public scoping meetings can be found on the BLM's project website displayed on the screen. If you have specific questions and would like to speak with someone about the project, please contact myself, Mary Ann Benson, Realty Specialist, by phone or email using the contact information on the slide. To stay informed about the project, you may sign up for the project mailing list by providing your contact information using the form displayed on the screen. If you are unable to access or complete the form, you may provide your contact information via email to myself, Mary Ann Benson, using the contact information on the screen. Next slide, please. Thank you, Mary Ann. We'll now transition into the question and answer por portion of the meeting. Galileo will serve as facilitator of the question and answer period. As a reminder, we ask those joining by computer to please type your questions into the Q&A dialog box on your Zoom screen. If you would like to provide a verbal comment, please wait until we close the question and answer segment. We'll let you know when we begin the comment segment of the meeting. Okay, so as we're waiting for questions to come through, um, we'll be reviewing some commonly asked questions. Thanks for your patience as we wait. Okay, our first question is, what environmental studies have been presented to show no harm to the Mojave Desert floor and water levels that will be depleted? Nick? 
Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Uh, various resource surveys are being conducted to provide a baseline of the affected environment. The BLM will use the information derived from public scoping comments to identify potential resource concerns, potential product project modifications and alternatives, and mitigation measures that could be used to minimize effects. The analysis will be documented in impacts disclosed in the draft environmental impact statement. After public review of the draft EIS, comments on the draft EIS will be considered will be considered and incorporated into the final EIS. The BLM will issue a record of decision at the close of the National Environmental Policy Act process. Thank you. We're just waiting for some more questions to come in. Feel free to use the Q&A function. It's at the bottom of your screen to type your questions for the BLM. While we're waiting for the questions, please remember that the, co the scoping period comment period closes on September 14th, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. If you joined by phone and have a question, you can click star nine, and that will allow you to raise your hand if you would like to ask a question. Okay, we have another question. Uh, why is the upgrade needed and who will benefit from the project? Yeah, the 2022 and 2023 California Independent System Operator CAISO transmission plans note that the project will provide additional transmission grid reliability, reduce transmission grid congestion, and provide opportunities to meet the renewable energy portfolio standards by connecting potential renewable energy developments in Southern Nevada and provide economic development opportunities. Gridline has submitted the right-of-way application to the BLM to meet the company's obligation as a participating transmission owner in the CAISO to meet the electrical, electrical demands of end users, respond to transmission interconnection requests, improve overall system reliability and to provide regional redundancy. Thank you, Nick. To stay informed about the project, you may sign up for the project mailing list by providing your contact information using the form. Um, that information to do that is going to be shown on the screen at the close of the meeting. Also, the BLM National Environmental Policy Act Register includes an interactive web map and various documents about the project, so you can go there as well to get more information. Okay, we've got another question here for you, Nick. Is this upgrade needed for more energy sales for Yellow Pine Solar and others? Yeah, like we, we said earlier, this upgrade is needed in part to provide opportunities to meet the renewable energy portfolio standards.
Okay, thank you again for your patience while we're waiting. Uh, we're getting information right now for those questions coming in. Okay, uh, Nick, we have our next question. What entities own the existing transmission lines and how does Gridlions fit into the picture? Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Um, so Gridlions actually owns the current system. They hold the existing right of way for, for the current system that is in place. Um, their, their application is to upgrade that entire, that entire system. So. Thank you again for your patience while we're waiting for these questions to come in. As a reminder, if you are calling in on the phone, you may press star nine and that will allow you to raise or lower your hand. We will acknowledge you and you'll be able to unmute to ask a question. Nick, I've got a question um, in regards to the demand for water. What is the anticipated demand for water given that water will be necessary for the construction of the transmission line in other future connected projects? Yeah, thank you, Ellen. Uh, at this time, we do not have specific water demand estimates. And that will be developed later in the process. Just a reminder that you can later in the process, again, visit the BLM's National Environmental Policy Act register. Um, it does include the interactive map, various documents about the project, and as more information becomes available, announcements for future meetings, 
um, that will all be posted on that site. Um, also, this meeting will be repeated again tomorrow. So if you think of questions after this meeting is over, uh, you'll be able to join again tomorrow. Just register in the same way that you did to register for this meeting. Thank <clears throat> Just a few reminders worth mentioning as the questions come in. Gridlance is in the scoping phase, thus information is still being gathered regarding the project. Again, please visit the BLM's e-planning site for the project to access project information. We will have a comment, verbal comment time of, as part of this meeting uh, a little bit later. Um, so if you are waiting for that, please, we appreciate your patience and I will let you know when that time begins. Okay, we've got just a few more questions coming in. Um, and after we answer these next few questions, we are probably gonna move into the public comment period. Again, if you're calling in, pressing star nine will allow you to raise and lower your hand and pressing star six will allow you to unmute your mic. We are gonna begin with those that indicated when registering that they have a comment. Um, so please wait until I call on you before unmuting your microphone. Also keep in mind, this is not your only opportunity to provide comment after this meeting and up until September 14th. You can provide wit written comments or questions to the BLM um, through the project email that's gonna be shown at the closing slide or also by visiting the BLM's e-planning uh, website.
think I have a question for you um, about uh, the proposed upgrade. And that question is, which ratepayers will eventually pay for this proposed upgrade? Thank you, Ellen. And at this point, we we don't have an answer to that question. That's something we'll work with the applicant and, and try to find an answer for. I have another question about upgrades. Are there future plans to upgrade the line north to Beatty? Yeah, thank you, Alan. Um, we do actually have an application for an additional line that goes north from, from the Johnny Corner area. Um, but at this point, we have not started processing that application. And we'll just wait a few more moments to see if there are any other questions to come in. Otherwise, we're going to transition into the public input period. All right, if there are no more questions, um, you can continue to put questions in the box and we will reply only in the Q&A box, but um, we will continue to answer questions throughout the meeting. But for now, we appreciate all your thoughtful questions and to the BLM for their responses. Uh, we're gonna begin the comment session. And as a reminder, we will begin with those participants who indicated when registering for the meeting, that they would like to make a comment. For those who did not register to ask a question, you may do so now. Or actually, to make a comment, you may do so now. For those joining by computer, again, please select the raise hand feature when it is your turn to speak. And the, I'll ask you to unmute your microphone. If you're joining by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and select star six to unmute. When it is your turn, I'll accept your request to unmute. When providing your comment, first provide your full first and last name. Each speaker will be given two minutes to make their comment. A timer will be displayed on the screen. Your input will be included in the project record. Next slide, please. As we transition into the public input period, please keep in mind that BLM wants to hear from all members of the public. Out of respect for everyone's participation, we'll be using the following guidelines. Stay within your allotted time to allow everyone the opportunity to speak. Please be respectful of others and refrain from profanity. If these guidelines are not followed, we may mute your microphone and move on to the next person. Your participation is an important part of the decision-making process. The most effective comments are those that provide useful information to the agencies. Keep your comments focused on the proposed project and what is being analyzed. Think about the concerns you have about the impacts the project may have and explain them in detail. Comments should focus on identifying potentially affected resources, potential resource issues that should be analyzed, and data sources the agency may not be aware of. Avoid comments that simply state, I'm in favor of the project or I'm opposed to this project. Please remember, the more clear, concise, and relevant to the project your comments are, the more effective and useful they will be at improving the Environmental Impact Statement and Resource Management Plan Amendment and informing the BLM's decision. Okay, our first commenter today is Kevin Emrick. Kevin, please raise your hand and we'll unmute your microphone. Kevin, before you begin your comment, please remember to state your full name for the record and the two minute timer will begin after stating your name. Hi, can you hear me? We sure can. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't have a very long comment here, but um, thank you for allowing the comment. Um, this is a fairly big upgrade. Um, the line is owned by Nextera, and Nextera is also building Yellow Pine. But the amount of um, plans to upgrade substations in both the line capacity um, indicates that there are going to be some really uh, major connected actions of like, large scale solar impact to this project. Um, you need to review that either as a connected action or a major cumulative impact when you start doing the NEPA review. Um, those impacts include intense water use in the Pahrump Valley, um, elimination of desert tortoise habitat. The line itself will probably kill a lot of birds for the upgrade, but the solar projects will equally have impacts to avian um, resources and also um, um, different herpetological fauna uh, in the desert. So there's a lot of um, stuff on both sides of Mount Charleston and the spring range um, that will be impacted in the larger picture of this upgrade. And furthermore, I think it would be helpful to look at the future plans to upgrade it north to the Bay Area, the cumulative impact, because the Green Link substation will only handle a gigawatt and so that's the obvious um, plan to stuff more solar um, and energy sprawl into the Amargosa Valley. So those will be my comments for now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We'll reset that timer. Our next uh, commenter is John Hyatt. John, please raise your hand so we can unmute your microphone. John, can you hear me? We can. Please state your first and last name before beginning your comment, and the timer will start after you've stated your name. I'm John Hyatt, J-O-H-N-H-I-A-T-T. -T. Um, this is going to involve a lot of disturbance, and one of the problems we have when we have big areas of disturbance in the desert is introduction of invasive plant species. So part of the plan here really needs to be how they will be dealing with invasives. And that isn't just best practices of washing equipment and people cleaning their shoes. There needs to be follow-up for at least five years after construction to catch those things that will inevitably um, occur and be reintroduced. Also, we need a revegetation plan for all that area of disturbance. How are we gonna deal with cacti and yuccas? How will they be saved? We need to know what kind of mitigation there's going to be for the loss of animal habitat here. Um, and bird strikes and impacts to avians are going to be really important here. Most people don't realize how devastating transmission lines, especially those that are east-west in direction, pose for birds because most birds, migratory birds, migrate at night and they don't see these things at night. So we need to know what sort of um, additions there will be or modifications to the lines to increase bird visibility, visibility for birds and how that will be dealt with. Um, also, this will cross the old Spanish trail. There's already a line crossing that, the Valley Electric line, but this will be a lot bigger. So we need to talk about what the visual impacts of that will be and um, how that will be dealt with. And again, what kind of mitigation are we going to have for this, for the loss of habitat for, for animals, especially birds and, um, and reptiles? Thank you. Thank you for your comment, John. I noticed you did have some questions. Please be sure to send those questions in to the BLM using the forms um, that we will show at the end of the screen. Do we have anyone else that would like to make a comment? If you do, just raise your hand using the raise hand function and we can put your name up. Looks like Mason. Mason, I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Vole. Mason. Hi, Ellen. Actually, Mason Vale, but you were close. Vale, thank you. Okay, if you would just state your name clearly again, first and last, and then we'll start the timer when you begin your comment. Yes, my name is Mason, M-A-S-O-N. Last name is Vale, V-O-E-H-L. 
I am the executive director of the Amargosa Conservancy. We're a local nonprofit organization that's been the leading voice on conservation issues in the Amargosa River watershed for the last 20 years. Thank you to the BLM uh, Prompt Field Office for providing this opportunity to provide comment. Um, the key focus of my organization is advocating for the sustainable management of groundwater resources that sustain critical habitat throughout the watershed, including protected landscapes and biodiversity hotspots, such as Ash, Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge and the Amargosa Wild and Scenic River. Uh, the wildlife in these areas and the communities in the region generally uh, depend on the availability of groundwater provided by the Amargosa River and its tributaries for their lives and livelihoods. So our primary concern with this Gridlions transmission project is its impacts to groundwater resources, as water will certainly be required for the project's construction, specifically for dust control. And we believe it's essential that the BLM consider not only the total volume of water required for the construction and maintenance of the transmission line, but for all other future connected actions and projects. It's critical that the BLM consider the cumulative impact of this project on those groundwater resources of the Amargosa River. An analysis must be conducted to determine the availability of groundwater in these hydrographic basins. And we believe the Nevada State Engineer should be consulted, especially in light of all these other proposed projects in the watershed and in light of the current status of these basins as in overdraft. So we believe the BLM should consider mitigation measures, including potentially purchasing retiring water rights to offset any demand on groundwater necessary for the construction of this project and connected actions uh, to ensure that the balance of groundwater use and recharge are brought into closer alignment. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and we look forward to participating in future opportunities during this NEPA process. Thank you for your comment, Mason. Um, just as a reminder, uh, if you have questions, um, you're welcome to please continue to use the Q&A function that's at the bottom of your screen to add additional comments. Um, if you would like to make a verbal comment, please raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you and give you that opportunity. The BLM is committed to remain here until eight, uh, as was advertised for this meeting. So please uh, let us know if you've got any comments or any questions. Just a reminder, this scoping period is open until September 14th, 2023. Please have your written comments submitted to the BLM no later than 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to comment or ask a question? All right, Nick, let's go ahead and we're gonna finish our closeout. Thank you all who provided comments during today's meeting. If you still wish to provide a comment and your name was not called, we'll encourage everyone who's interested to submit their written comments. You may submit written comments after this meeting in three ways, electronically via the BLM National Environmental Policy Act register displayed on the screen. Click on the Participate Now button to the right of the document link. Enter your comment information and then hit Submit. By sending an email or, or sending a written comment to the contact information displayed on the screen. 
Again, the deadline for submitting written comments is September 14th, 2023 by 1159 Pacific time. After the comment closes, the BLM will review all comments. We're going to continue to keep the Q&A session open, so feel free to type your questions in that Q&A box um, and we'll remain here till eight o'clock. Um, Nick, would you like to close it out? Yeah, first of all, thanks for all of you who provided questions and comments. You've given us a lot to use and to consider as we move forward. We look forward to continuing to work closely with all of you. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we're still in the early stages and are thankful to have our, everybody's input. Please feel free to share this information presented in today's meeting. This meeting was recorded, so you can go back and watch the recording and provide any additional comments. The comment period will be open until September 14th, 2023, and the BLM will publish a scoping report that will summarize all of the comments that, review, that we received during the scoping process. Thank you again, and we look forward to your input, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Just as a reminder, we'll be here till 8. We'll take questions in the Q&A box.